Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to another Two Tokens podcast. And today we're going to talk about a very interesting project we are working on with Two Tokens. Uh, my name is Olive Rikke, and besides being the host of this podcast of today, I'm also a board member of the Two Token Foundation. And the project we're going to talk about today is a project related to the European blockchain sandbox, where with a consortium of multiple parties being two tokens, Asset Blocks, ABN Amro Bank and Rabobank are working together on the tokenized slash stablecoin payments use case. And I'm not going to reveal too much about the use case because I have two great guests in the podcast today. Uh, on the one hand, I have Maynard Jansberg from Asset Block. Maynard, welcome. Yes, thank you. And on the other hand, I have uh, Martijn Siebrands from ABN Emro or ABN Emro Bank. I don't know which. Both are fine. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> so welcome to you. Um, it is a really nice uh, um, uh, project we're working on because under the guidance of Bird & Bird, we're going to sit down with various European financial regulators to talk about the use case I briefly described in a few words. But um, I actually want to go over to you, Maindert. Can you elaborate, elaborate a little bit more about the use case? Uh, what is it about? What yeah, we're talking about? For sure. Uh, roughly two years ago, we started a discussion uh, also within the energy working group of uh, two tokens on the possibilities of tokenizing solar assets, actually the actual solar panel. Um, <clears throat> As a company in our portfolio, we uh, own solar assets, and this led to a discussion if we could bring it to practice. Could we really build uh, a tokenization on solar assets? Um, we first started on looking into the asset itself, but that was way too complicated if you look to ownership issues and what might happen <coughs> in, the Euro in the European space. So. Uh, asset blocks moved to uh, a solution where we offer NFTs and these NFTs represent a certificate of shares of a solar project. And uh, we choose for NFTs because each certificate um, is represented by a unique uh, NFT. Um, so asset blocks is offering NFTs over its platform with underlying a solar assets. And uh, the, the consequence of that is that the investor buys a part, a partly ownership of the asset and receives back dividends. Um, in the use case, uh, we've set up a platform that complies with uh, KYC uh, any money laundry regulations. Um, <coughs> um, and uh, it is built on, uh, it, it's deployed on Polygon. And one of the challenges we have is that people invest in euros and they'll, they, they get a payout in euros. And one of our dreams is that we would be able to do everything on chain. So now it's a off chain, on chain, off chain fiat transaction combined with an on chain NFT transaction where we actually uh, transfer an NFT from our wallet to the wallet of the investor. And being able to do everything on-chain on chain would be a great, uh, a great improvement, but that gives a lot of questions. So if we would introduce, for example, a stablecoin, where, where this use case is about, uh, and asset blocks would pay out stablecoin or would accept stablecoin as payment, this gives a lot of questions. So. To get back to, to, the, to the use case of asset blocks, in essence, it's an issue of certificates of shares on the MIFI2. Um, and it's an NFT that you can buy as an investor using fiat and receiving this NFT in your wallet. Yeah, and, and this is uh, very important what you're mentioning yeah. just now at, 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 in your last sentence. You're not selling NFTs. NFTs is just a representation of the certificate of shares. Yes, that's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. and it uh, eases up tradability. And yeah, actually, we use the NFT to make an illiquid asset liquid. So uh, 
Uh, the NFT is transferable, so it can go from one wallet to the other wallet. It only can happen when the wallet has been through uh, our KYC and has been whitelisted. So <coughs> it's not possible to to trade it on any platform. Actually, there aren't platforms in the market yet that allow security-linked NFTs to be uh, to be traded from a from a, a, um, a regulatory perspective. They, they are not in the market yet, but you can transfer them as long as the wallet that buys the that buys the NFT uh, is on the whitelist. Okay. Sounds very interesting. Also very uh, innovative in, in yeah. itself. Uh, typically something from, say, the new financial industry. Yes. Let's go to the more, at least perceived traditional financial industry, being the regular banks. Uh, ABN Ambro being one of the oldest banks in the Netherlands. Um, what is your role and your interest in this, in this project as a whole? Yeah, uh, thanks for the question. So the, uh, our interest is that uh, within ABN AMRO, we are of course looking to the future and, and uh, we would like to say as a future-proof bank. So uh, in the digital age. So we see that more and more financial products will become digitized and also more and more transactions are just on a smartphone or something else. Uh, but if you look to the traditional capital market where we are still active on, it's still a lot of papers, it's still transaction date plus five for settlement and those kind of things. So with projects like this, we can open up also the discussion internally and also with the regulator, with our clients. Say, hey, there's a new world that's forming and we would like to be active in that world as well to guide our clients and to learn also from uh, use cases what we can uh, achieve uh, with this new technology. Because in essence, the, the, the product like the financing side is maybe the same, but uh, like Mendes uh, told her, if you go with the euro in and then you get the uh, uh, your um, uh, NFT and then you go out and you would like to have your Euro. We have the same discussions and projects that we have with our institutional clients or with our wealth clients. So I think what, what our role could be is that we have done uh, some pilots now with uh, tokenized bonds where we also talked with the regulator with a lot of legal firms, with a lot of technology providers and we learned our part there the last two years. Uh, and if you combine that, we can make some more speed thing together. Uh, to create new solutions in the ecosystem. And we, we are not a believer of building everything our, our, on our own. We also not we are an old bank, but we are not a bank from, from the, the last uh, centuries and like uh, all over the globe. Uh, so we have a North European uh, uh, focus. Uh, and there we would like to partner with companies that can bring value to, to clients. And if it's then also still on the sustainability part and the energy transition, yeah, this is of course very interesting for us as a bank as well. Yeah, and also um, w one step further, um, uh, you say we're, we're interested in, in, in the new products and services that are being offered in this way. But also, I would reckon that surrounding um, uh, products and services uh, around these new products, like uh, hosted wallet providing, etc., would be of interest for you. Yeah, for sure. And uh, like in our uh, last two deals, uh, we, we were offered those kind of services already to uh, a set of, uh, of clients, uh, all in a more proof of concept setting. And with this Sandbox, we would like to extend it, of course, to more clients and yeah, to open up that market as well for, uh, for us also on the, on the, on the custody side, uh, which is a very traditional one, but we can now also offer digital asset custody. Yeah. Oh, great. Great to hear. Um, so, so what are, um, uh, besides uh, trying to be innovative and, and uh, making things more efficient, etc., you're probably going to run into various challenges in this use case. Can, can you just name a few of them? Yeah. Um, <coughs> If, if you look to what, what happens on the asset blocks platform, uh, an investor that signs up uh, goes through a KYC and buys a NFT. The NFT is a MIFID II regulated instrument. So far, there isn't a big discussion. So this, this particular NFT. Uh, this, parti NFT yeah, this particular, whole, this particular NFT, NFT yeah. uh, has to comply uh, to MIFID II. But uh, there are a lot of interesting topics on the table because if an investor uh, is onboarded and buys this NFT, um, we, uh, the, the investor, uh, for example, needs, gas, needs to pay gas fees to be able to buy the NFT. Um, if, this, uh, the, if this investor has his own wallet with his own, with his own uh, for example, Matic in it, uh, then he's able to pay with his own wallet. But a lot of investors won't have Matic in their wallet. They 
they are pretty new probably to uh, to crypto. So what happens, for example, if asset blocks would pay the gas fees for the client? What does it mean from a regulatory perspective? Um, if this investor is client uh, at a bank and the bank is uh, has the hosted wallet and, and therefore in the custodian role, is the bank allowed to pay the gas fees for the client? Because it, it means that the bank has to hold crypto somewhere. So, so that sounds like an interesting discussion for you internally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. We, uh, we, we've worked around that in our first uh, pilots. Uh, but we would like to have also a structural solution there and uh, a debate yeah. with the regulator about it, not only in the Netherlands, but also in Germany in or other countries. Yeah. Yeah. So th this is a small example. And um, this is just only buying the NFT. But if we would move, to, for example, to a, a stable coin or uh, a coin backed by a bank in some sort of way, um, wh what is going to happen in that case, uh, does the bank need to comply, for example, to Mika, in, which is under development, if uh, we would be able to pay out in, uh, in stablecoin? What does it mean for regula regulatory perspective for asset blocks? And if you even take that further, technically, we are already able to accept any cryptocurrency from a, from a technical point of view. But from a regulatory point of view, it's highly complicated. What happens? If we accept Bitcoin in issuing, for example, a financial instrument, and does it qualify as a payment? Um, uh, what and what kind of regulatory issues pop up? And this is uh, necessary to discuss with with uh, with the regulator, and it's all under development and in development, uh, and therefore highly interesting to to research together what is possible and what is not possible. Mm. Yeah, and, and you mentioned you circumnavigated the, some of these issues prior. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, how, how did you do it so far then? Yeah, so we did um, uh, three transactions. So first one was a secondary trade on an existing digital bond, the, the EIB bond, which is on uh, Ethereum. We did it with our uh, trading desk and uh, operation team for markets with the aim to, to show to them there is a, a, an ISIN, so the traditional world where you can look up the, the data, but there's also an Ether Explorer. Uh, and to combine those worlds was very useful for us to start also the discussion, okay, if, if there is an ISIN, then it exists eh, for uh, the normal capital markets. So now we have an ISIN on an EIB uh, digital bond. Uh, can we do something similar for our clients as well? So with that, we started to work on a uh, transaction with a, with a Midcorp client where we had uh, three uh, investors from Wealth investing in this, uh, in this bond. Uh, we did it on uh, Stellar, so the public uh, Ethereum, uh, sorry, the public uh, chain. Uh, and um, what we learned there is, uh, yeah, we needed to go through all kind of change risk assessment committees within the bank. So in the end, we ended up with conversations with around 180 people uh, before we were able to do such a transaction. That doesn't sound really, really efficient. Uh, no, but that, that is also why you see uh, that, uh, and there's a lot of talk, there's just a nice paper from McKinsey saying, right, we are for six years now talking about tokenization, but what have we seen so far live? I think if you look to the market, there is Siemens with a slightly bigger transaction, and there is the EIB, and of course some others. But uh, I think you can, can have them on, on two hands, and then you have all the deals, uh, all the deals there. Um, and from ABN Ember, we were also part of, of Picto, where we were looking in 2019 for a solution where you could keep the private key of a security token safe. And the security token was issued by a financial institution. It was no use case because it's, it's still very limited. And so that, that project stopped also from uh, different reasons. But we start our learning journey there already. And then going back to the third transaction, which we obviously did uh, 13th of September, this was a green digital bond. So every time we, we try to add some steps. So first we did only the secondary trade, then we do the, the issuance and uh, the, the safekeeping. And now we took also the role to, to add also some data about the green digital framework and, and other uh, stuff there, because we took also some other roles from ABN AMRO. Um, and uh, with, with doing so, we also saw that the number of people that we needed to inform within the bank was uh, going, going down significantly. The time that we needed to spend on this was also very reduced. So if we are going to do a next deal, we expect it will be way faster. So the learnings that we have done in the last two years give us now, I, I don't want to call it a head start, but at least we can walk uh, in this, uh, in this uh, uh, domain. 
to do new deals. And we have also ambassadors within the bank who believes in this because they have seen live transactions. So the last transaction, also the one with, uh, with our client APOC, we just do it live with our clients, with the investor, uh, with our legal colleagues, with also the legal firms, and, and we can do it in a live uh, environment on the screen and people say, all right, this is great. Uh, and, and, and going back to yeah, yeah yeah and going back to settlement yeah? so traditional it's it's transaction date plus five for the settlement we can now do t plus zero uh, so we do it instantly but we still have to check the fiat world uh, is the money there and then we can do the transaction and of course we would like to integrate that uh, much more but mind you if you talk with institutional investors they would rather like to see still t plus one uh, because they will do some checks and balances themselves internally so there's still a big deviation between the, 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 the new world and the traditional world. Yeah. And uh, what, what you're saying there, that's, that's a very interesting point because when you just briefly look at the use case, you will think it's about tokenized securities, but it's basically about the stablecoin payments uh, around tokenized securities. Exactly. Yeah. That, that's what the use case is about. Because yeah, uh, if, if you look to the use case, it's the, the sell of the NFT. If we do it in a stablecoin in a crypto, um, uh, it gives, it brings in play uh, certain regulations. For, but on the other hand, if we would distribute dividend via a stable coin, um, other regulations come into play. If we do a buyback, yeah. also other regulation comes into play. So the importance of this, this discussion is to very precisely discuss what happens in these several scenarios if we use a stable coin. Because Role, roles are changing. Eh? For example, yep. if Asset does a payout in stablecoin and distributes it to to hosted wallet, which are probably part partly by by Asset Blocks, what does it mean for Asset Blocks? Does Asset Blocks become a, um, a some sort of service provider, payment agent, paying agent? It could very well be they eh? could, classified as a crypto so, asset service provider, eh, as yeah. a Casper or whatever. So all these discussions are of importance in the uh, capabilities of what you're able to do within uh, the current regulation. Yeah. And um, this is also a search uh, among parties, what role fits the bank, what role fits asset blocks, where can we uh, create strengths together? Uh, for one, one highly interesting discussion for us is we do a KYC. The KYC is uh, as up to standards uh, as you need to do it. But if we do a KYC, can a bank accept this KYC? Can we exchange the KYC? Can we accept a KYC from the bank or do we have to do our own KYC? These are questions of huge importance because uh, imagine a customer first doing a KYC at, uh, at ABN Amro Bank, then to be able to buy the NFT has to do a KYC at our platform. That's highly inefficient. So. Mm -hmm. And also, this is this is of uh, of yeah of of big importance that we get clarity. Small question, big impact. Huh? Yeah, small yeah. question, big impact, especially in the customer's journey. Yeah, and especially uh, and that that's what I love about this use case. If you if you look at it high level, it sounds very simplistic, but there's so yeah. much behind yeah. what's happening there. And and um, yeah, you're you're just briefly mentioning it, uh, Martijn. We're go going down from T plus five to T plus zero, but actually. If we're going to do the buying and selling of the uh, tokenized security in a stablecoin, you're going to uh, atomic settlement. Mm -hmm. So yeah. within the same transaction, the settlement yeah. is done. Something we have never seen before. Yeah, no, right. And, and that, that will post some challenges in itself, I would mm -hmm. say. Not in the least, are the institutional investors ready for that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it uh, depends, I think, with, with whom you're talking and also uh, where they are located uh, globally. So some countries are uh, further, uh, I think, than, than we are in the Netherlands. But uh, if you talk with the right people that, that uh, see what's, what's happening, uh, yeah, they are, they are open to that. Not for the uh, tickets that they are normally do uh, on the capital market, but for smaller sizes. So we, know, we know the parties we can work with uh, to, to test and to build uh, further on propositions. Yeah. And 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 uh, in addition to that, uh, this if you look to, to these institutional investors, they also immediately get confronted with transparency, mm -hmm. and uh, that's challenging as well. Because if it's if it's on a public blockchain, everybody is able to see what has happened. So also the question of uh, the uh, the privacy regulations is important. So there is so much 
to discuss with with regulators on this uh, yeah, on, on, on these fields mm -hmm. um, I, I think we even could fill uh, like three sandboxes with <laughs> questions <laughs> and discussions yeah. we have. I think it's also important that because also on asset side blocks eh, you, you have done your your learnings uh, the last two years as well mm -hmm. Uh, and it looks sometimes from the tech maybe easy, but the, the things around it make it complicated. Yeah. And that's because we bring some knowledge to the table from the past already. And we can do such interesting things like this uh, with a, with a uh, much faster speed than, uh, than when you just start with a blank paper. Yeah, so I just only need to, to give a small example. Uh, it's certificates of shares. So it means there is a foundation that does the registry. And traditionally, the foundation has its registers that are the proof of investments and who is behind it. And now it's on the blockchain. It seems simple, but it's a huge change in approach because the, the foundation now only has an application to uh, look on the blockchain what the registry and the ledger is. Mm -hmm. and, and that seems a small difference, but it's from a regulatory perspective, a huge difference. So polygons can could become your business intelligence tooling for perhaps for Uber registry, etc. Perhaps, yeah. and I think and and that that's further along. That that's a discussion going on in the market. Are we, for example, on a European level, to be able to get a um, an, uh, an an identity or a KYC in a wallet that you can use at any platform? Mm -hmm. Uh, and what are the conditions uh, for that? And it would be very helpful in the innovation in this industry if individual investors or, or institutional investors do not need to identify time over time at each platform, um, but simply have a regularly updated uh, KYC. Yeah. So could we state this? this could be a kind of groundbreaking project in the market? Well, it's, ground, it's innovative and it is groundbreaking from a certain perspective, but it's also a step in an innovation path. So um, for me, the groundbreaking is the move to, uh, the, the, the move to this decentralized finance approach to this tokenized world. Mm -hmm. That's the really that's the real breakthrough, and a lot of steps need to be set to together. And this is one of the steps uh, that helps and contributes to this new uh, yeah, to, to, to this new world. Yeah, and that, that's also in line what you, you were saying, uh, Martijn. Uh, you did a couple of steps, and this is basically one of the natural next ones. Yeah, and just yeah. broadening the scope every step of the way. Yeah, if, if we look at the, the, the value chain, uh, we, we take it then uh, from now from the perspective from the capital market, because uh, from, from our team, we work directly with uh, colleagues from capital markets, so they can also do the sales to clients and, and pitch. Uh, we, we train them in this uh, uh, field. Um, but with, with this new step, we can again uh, add uh, another uh, added value to the, the tokenized bonds that we have done or other products that we would like to, uh, to see. Uh, and doing it in a consortium like this will also help to uh, discuss with all kinds of different lawyers or regulators and to bring new, um, um, new information to the table because there's still a, a lot of unknowns uh, and unknowns always give questions for investors, give questions for maybe people that have to sign off on, on new propositions, etc. So the more knowledge we can bring together uh, at this stage uh, will, will really help uh, to build uh, new solutions. All right. On that note, I would say yeah. um, I think we're starting a very interesting journey and to emphasize on we're starting it at the moment because we basically uh, were just entered into the sandbox. Uh, over the coming months, we're going to have to the uh, discussions with the various regulators. Um, and hopefully by year's end, can come up with more details on how things went. Um, in the meanwhile, uh, through our podcast, we'll keep you updated as much as we can. Um, I want to thank you, Maynard, and you, Martijn, for joining me here today and thank just both. briefly yeah, uh, introducing this use case. And I think there's a lot of interesting stuff that's coming to the table in the coming months. So thank you very much and hope to speak to you soon again. Thank you as well. Thanks. What a pleasure.
That was it for today's podcast. Thank you for listening in and please subscribe so you don't miss out on our upcoming episodes. If you want to get in touch with us, you can find our contact details at www.twotokens.org.